welcome to uh, this session of the lecture series on fluid inclusions in minerals. We just got ourselves uh, briefly introduced to this particular uh, te technique or the methodology uh, that can be used in many different disciplines uh, in geology. So, just to have a brief uh, recap recapitulation of uh, what we uh, discussed last time. Uh, it is very important to understand the fluid in the in the earth. Uh, there are many processes which are fluid assisted and there are many processes many features which result directly from the fluid activity like uh, a wide class of mineral deposits and there are surface operated processes like the formation of the vaporites sometimes indicating the composition of the paleo ocean and uh, uh, starting from very low pressure temperature regime of uh, diagenesis to very high pressure temperature regimes in the mantle uh, corresponding to formation of diamonds and uh, there are uh, these these fluids these paleo fluids are preserved in the minerals in the form of tiny fluid feed cavities these cavities are essentially isolated uh, uh, sealed uh, encapsulated within the mineral during the process of its formation or growth or recrystallization. And uh, if we carefully studies, uh, study these uh, tiny objects under the microscope and uh, carry out several microscopic and microanalytical uh, techniques, uh, microanalytical methodologies, then we can retrieve uh, vital information, important information regarding the paleofluid characteristics understand the processes that operated in the subsurface and uh, they are uh, the fluid that we are sampling uh, as uh, the remnant fluid inside the in the solid lattice of the inclusions are actually collected from the earth surface or may be on certain instances some few hundreds of meters below the surface in underground mines. But we must keep it in mind that they operated in much deeper regions and uh, they uh, are the combination of the, the fluid essentially is uh, uh, present in the in the in, in encapsulated cavities in the minerals in the form of liquid or liquid plus vapor plus solid. So, depending on the chemistry of the paleo fluid and uh, these the inclusions and it they, they sometimes uh, the very basic information uh, are generated by using simple devices uh, as, uh, along with the microscope and uh, can go up to very very highly sophisticated microanalytical techniques and they provide uh, useful information about the uh, chemistry of the fluid the physical chemical environment in which they operated if we apply uh, principles of uh, the phase relations, phase behavior and the pressure volume temperature composition relationships in such fluids. Keeping in mind that this fluid which is essentially dominantly water uh, is also charged with, uh, with various uh, variety of uh, electrolytes, the chlorides, fluorides, bromides, carbonates, bicarbonates, sulphates, sulphides and so many anionic, uh, so many uh, species or so many compounds of different cationic species. Uh, like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron and so on in, the, in, the, in them uh, depending on the condition in which they exist inside in the interior of the earth they can uh, dissolve substantial amount of these electrolytes. And also non electrolyte species like carbon dioxide uh, sometimes the reduced species as methane or sulphur species like sulphur dioxide H 2 S uh, argon nitrogen also remain dissolved and that is how it becomes a multi component uh, fluid with various electrolytes and non electrolyte species and uh, they interact with rocks to uh, give rise to various uh, 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 and various products in form of uh, modified rock in form of mineral deposits and so on. So, the data have to be synthesized uh, very effectively to understand a broader processes of terrestrial evolution, petrogenesis and past paleo atmosphere and so on. So, uh, we can broadly uh, 
see this process classify even though it is not an exhaustive list that the processes are uh, uh, generally which are very much dominated by the fluid we call them as the hydrothermal processes and uh, giving rise to uh, different types of rocks and different types of mineral deposits and uh, such paleofluids are preserved in minerals like quartz, potash feldspar, calcite, fluorite, topaz, gemstones, uh, then uh, cassiterite, wolframite to some of the names some of the ore minerals, sphalerite and also if we use specialized microscopic techniques like the infrared microscope, we can also study this, these fluid inclusions in uh, minerals which are opaque to ordinary light. Uh, by using an infrared microscope, we can study inclusions in any of the sulphide minerals like pyrite, uh, molybdenite, stibnite. Um, in fact, any of the sulphides uh, should be suitable for study of this fluid inclusions uh, in them. And uh, we can uh, have processes which are uh, surface operated evaporation process. So, we can study the minerals in uh, study these inclusions in minerals like halite, gypsum, anhydrite and so on. We can study them in metamorphic quartz, garnet, corderite and even sometimes uh, uh, many other metamorphic minerals which uh, recrystallize in the presence of fluid and also in fluid in deep earth we can see fluid inclusions in diamond. Uh, <coughs> coming to the one of the important uh, uh, aspect of these fluid inclusions, we generally ask ourselves that uh, do we know the mechanism by which these fluid inclusions are entrapped or encapsulated in the solid lattices of the minerals from which uh, I mean the minerals which grow in the presence of fluid or directly from the uh, fluid precipitating from them. Uh, this definitely uh, constitutes one of the uh, fundamental uh, subjects of study is crystal growth about which uh, direct applicability to uh, geology situations uh, operating in geological time scales are not very well known, but we still can within that framework we can still uh, try to understand uh, the mechanism of by which this uh, fluid inclusions are entrapped in the sol uh, in by the minerals in the solid lattice. So, if we uh, go by the basic principles that uh, this fluid inclusions they are getting entrapped in the minerals necessarily means that this process actually representing a deposition process the the the, uh, the the thing that we are getting represented is essentially that the mineral is getting deposited or this recrystallizing in the presence of a fluid phase. So, the mineral has to grow. So, if we uh, talk about mineral uh, growth of minerals then we know that minerals can grow uh, either uh, the minerals can grow in a solid state. For example, there is a metamorphic uh, uh, recrystallization of a, and giving rise to mineral assemblages. So, there uh, in the absence of a fluid the minerals grow in, as a result of a diffusion of uh, uh, elements in, res, in, in, in an appropriate uh, thermal environment uh, and there we generally do not expect to uh, because hypothetically this particular uh, process is not taking place in presence of a fluid phase. So, the other uh, way that uh, minerals uh, can grow uh, in, in presence of a fluid is that they can have a they can go grow in a constrained uh, medium. Uh, in a polycrystalline aggregate for example, one particular mineral assemblage giving rise to another and if any of these reacting uh, mineral phase happens to be a hydrous phase. For example, if we if we say that A plus uh, B giving rise to C plus D plus a fluid phase. This fluid phase uh, uh, is, is actually uh, evolving during this particular process of uh, reaction and this mineral C and D uh, are forming. So, there is every possibility that during this uh, process of uh, growth uh, these minerals will the, uh, these minerals will encapsulate the fluid which was present and this fluid is more likely to be present in the intergranular spaces uh, facilitating the diffusion of the 
elemental species for the growth of this kind of uh, this process to take place or the mineral uh, minerals can possibly grow in a in a free or a open space uh, filling the open space for example if there is a uh, extensional deformation zone in the crust fractures are created either either uh, within the very shallow region in the earth's crust or there are some uh, shearing going on in which some dilational zones are, are created high strain zones in which fluid will accumulate and start uh, precipitating the minerals from the fluid. So, in this case the fluid is actually uh, giving rise to the mineral and the mineral is forming from the fluid and in this case also the minerals that they are growing from the fluid are likely to entrap the parent fluid as uh, inclusions in the solid lattice of these minerals. Uh, <coughs> what is actually uh, told in, in the context of the entrapment of fluid inclusions in the solid lattice of the minerals is essentially because we know that if the mineral uh, is growing suppose we take the case of a uh, formation of the mineral in open space fluid field cavity. So, if the mineral will grow from the fluid uh, starting from a point of nucleation and free and grow in a free space, if the crystal formation is absolutely is perfect then there is uh, no possibility of the parent fluid getting entrapped within them as inclusions. Whereas, so essentially the uh, entrapment of these inclusions arise because of what we can tell them is the irregularities in the crystal growth or defects in the crystal growth and some of the uh, mechanisms that that have been uh, suggested for this kind of to explain the, uh, the entrapment of the fluids is that uh, even if there is any small change in the concentration of any minor constituent during the process of growth of this crystal it would give rise to uh, uh, the gross imperfection in the crystal growth. Uh, and then uh, sometimes what basically we see as a, as a crystal sometimes with a very well developed face or Uh, either we see uh, which is a very well developed uh, face, but actually uh, what has been uh, what is actually observed in, in the in, in the experiments of crystal growth that the crystal actually grow like uh, in a very irregular uh, manner depending on the This basically uh, what we can say that this particular crystal uh, which grows from this from the fluid where there is supply of uh, nutrient to the growing uh, phases of the crystal will not grow in a very systematic way with all the phases developing at the same time. And because of this what is essentially termed as a dendritic uh, growth of the crystal that means some of the phases are some uh, fronts of the crystals will grow much faster and that is the way leaving behind some of the spaces in between which will be later on filled up and will uh, lead to encapsulation of the parent fluid in form of the uh, of uh, in the form of inclusions. So, such kind of in such this is one of the process which is uh, suggested. So, you can say that it is a dendritic growth pattern hollow or shell like skeletal or cavernous type of crystals uh, and the later completion of this growth leads to entrapment of inclusions. And uh, sometimes it so happen that uh, we think of a crystal the growth irregularities or sometimes the growth imperfection is such that the crystal starts growing only on the on the edges and thus uh, there is a starvation of the uh, nutrients to the center of the faces compared to the edges and uh, 
this also gives rise to something which is a little a variation from what we discussed at the dendritic growth and this also uh, is responsible in uh, leaving behind uh, spaces in which the parent fluid is entrapped and the later growth of the crystal uh, results in the entrapment of this kind of this uh, parent fluid as inclusions. And uh, so, these are some of the uh, mechanisms sometimes the crystals grow by a by a by a series of parallel blocks as the uh, diagram just I just discussed and uh, some of them grow very faster than the surface of the crystal become rough uh, with uh, many regular uh, reentrants and later growth covering these reentrant angles giving gives rise to entrapment of these inclusions. Uh, here uh, I just would uh, give a uh, illustrate what exactly I mean by this. So, we are considering the situation in which the crystal is growing in an open space fluid field cavity. So, uh, suppose that uh, this uh, this point represents the point on which the uh, this is the solid uh, substrate on which the crystal start to nucleate and this represents the point of renucleation. So, now the first uh, phase of the growth is represented by this uh, phase and entrapment of the parent fluid and this growth of the crystal is taking place in in sequence of uh, zones a series of this de uh, develop uh, this well developed uh, phases which are actually advancing to the open space which is filled with uh, the fluid from which the crystal is growing so this is a the schematic this is an illustration schematic illustration of exactly what happens in a uh, in a in a growth from in an open space just showing a, as if a single crystal is growing now if we uh, make a section of this particular if we happen to be getting this particular uh, in the form of a vein then we get a section take a section perpendicular to the c axis suppose this is a quartz crystal which is growing and we take a uh, section uh, perpendicular to the c axis and it would look like uh, with these kind of uh, uh, the subsequent growth zones which are shown and the distribution of this uh, fluid in the, the flu fluid cavities which are essentially randomly distributed without uh, following any particular pattern, but they definitely do are distributed in the subsequent growth zones of this particular of this mineral let us say for this example it is quartz. And it is a it is an example of a natural quartz crystal where the section shows the growth zones and uh, this uh, dusty uh, uh, things which are looking like uh, uh, well populated very small particles like the dusty inclusions which are essentially fluid inclusions. Here we could see the scale which is uh, 200 microns. Uh, many of the situa uh, situations it so happens that uh, under the microscope we, we most of the cases we we are not able to see these kind of growth zones in the host minerals uh, when we see them in the polycrystalline aggregate uh, and sometimes some specialized techniques such as a cathodoluminescence is used to uh, ascertain whether this particular mineral that we are studying had any such primary growth zone presence and this topic we will come back to uh, in a later date when we talk about the timing of the uh, entrapment of this uh, fluid inclusions vis a vis the history of uh, formation of this particular mineral which uh, is one of the very important uh, aspect of fluid inclusion study. Uh, so, uh, this diagram here it just represents again a schematic representation of suppose this is a uh, fracture. So, this represents a fracture, fracture and uh, on this fracture there was fluid and this structure has been created by some kind of an extensional uh, deformation and uh, the development of the crystals from both sides of the fracture wall is uh, shown here and uh, So, now suppose this particular fracture wall uh, is further uh, 
because of continued extension this fracture again or maybe because of some uh, fluid pressure either some pressure which is uh, being exerted some fluid pressure which is exerted as some kind of a mechanism of hydro fracturing or in association with also uh, a an extensional regime in which this fracture is gradually opening up and suppose this fracture again opens up and this part is again representing that there is again fluid flow into this particular fracture space and so that gives rise to So, there is uh, filling up of the fluid uh, of this fracture and this leads to further growth of uh, the mineral the same mineral on this uh, already formed uh, we can call it as a vein the quartz vein is forming in the in an open space. And And that is uh, now giving rise to, and when we uh, see this, when the, when we uh, when we are taking a section of this particular vein in the uh, microscope, and then we can see quartz crystals and within them we see the inclusions which are trapped. Uh, okay. Now, what happens is in most of the cases that what we discussed right now we are we just considered as if all these the situation where the crystals are growing on the fracture surface and each is able to grow to perfect crystals but what happens in uh, in actual in the in, in nature is that there is uh, this growth essentially take place in kind of impinged manner each of the when many many uh, nucleation points are created on the substrate and the crystals many crystals grow at the same time from the fluid the growth of one impinges on the other and this gives rise to a and suppose uh, the way it has been explained before that it is gradually uh, the fracture is op opening up and uh, several gener sev later generations of fluid have also come and uh, filled up this particular fracture space and we then see these quartz grains which are of uh, irregular margin and uh, we see the inclusions in these uh, quartz crystals. On situations where this particular uh, polycrystalline aggregate of this mineral quartz has has been able to uh, anneal to perfect polygonal grains which might have happened because of the migration of the grain boundary because of the uh, because the aggregate is uh, subjected to uh, annealing uh, and then these inclusions which are already present in them are likely to uh, be re-equilibrated or likely to re readjust or likely to change their shape and then we see them in a different kind of situation when we see this particular aggregate has actually been able to anneal and uh, give, give a different kind of a situation to us. We will be discussing uh, more on this as to what happens to the uh, inclusions which uh, are originally trapped in the 
mineral which grew from this from the fluid and when they are subjected to uh, any kind of later recrystallization of the host and what happens to them this is also going to be a one of the topics of our discussion. Okay. So, this is uh, a situation which so now what actually uh, this the, the thing which need to be explained or the thing which is uh, actually uh, the matter of concern is that when a, a crystal is growing in an open space like the situation which have depicted uh, the, the actual time that uh, actually elapses during this actual time that is uh, uh, that the that the mineral takes to form is uh, definitely variable depending on the various geological situations. Like say for example, this particular diagram which has been taken from Wilkinson 2001 depicting the uh, formation of mineralized vein in such kind of an open space where the subsequent uh, what has been shown over here as uh, the uh, subsequent the, this is the first uh, layer of the quartz crystals which formed on the substrate which was the fracture surface and then this particular fracture surface has undergone uh, this particular vein did undergone fracturing and further widening up later stage fluid uh, deposited the second stage of uh, 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 the host mineral quartz along with the sulphide minerals and so the fluid inclusions will get trapped depending on this particular sequence is operating in what time frame if this different batches of fluid uh, occupying the fracture space with opening up of the fracture happens in very quick succession then we will essentially be dealing with the same fluid uh, with much of variation of its characteristic if it happens in a short span of time. Whereas, it might so happen that the later stages of fluid activity uh, resulting in such kind of uh, fracturing of this uh, initially deposited quartz and then later deposition of the quartz happens in a gap of a substantial time period then it might so happen that the fluids coming in two different batches may not be very similar to each other as we essentially be sampling fluids which will be entirely different in their compositional characteristics. So, the uh, fluid inclusion study uh, intends to actually uh, meticulously uh, record or observe such kind of fluid inclusion characteristics in them. Uh, then the, uh, the measure several micro thermometric and micro analytical measurements which can be uh, done to to reveal or to work out the uh, evolution uh, of the fluid in terms of its composition and the physical chemical par parameter. Okay, we will just quickly uh, see some of the suggestions. Uh, uh, so, this mechanism of entrapment uh, as is suggested the rapid feathery growth. So, akin to a dendritic uh, growth pattern which uh, can be shown here like this particular crystal is having a dendritic growth pattern and after the uh, later growth of the crystal this uh, it is again. So, this uh, feathery growth actually is responsible in uh, entrapment of this particular uh, fluid as inclusions. And we can have a situation where there could be some kind of uh, is to begin with this was a crystal and there has been a small uh, dislocation dissolution uh, cavity which is formed in this particular crystal. And then with further later growth on this particular crystal this space which was left behind has resulted in entrapment of the uh, fluid in the form of an inclusion. So, this actually the crystal uh, it is something like a crystal is etched out due to partial dissolution and later growth which happens very commonly in a take, take for example, the common mineral like quartz such kind of uh, dissolution and reprecipitation uh, is very very common uh, because the fluid is uh, precipitating the same quartz and because of minor fluctuations local fluctuations in the compositions of the fluid results in such kind of uh, etched uh, out due to the partial dissolution and later. So, then this gives us some idea as to uh, what kind of uh, the feature of the inclusions also we could expect. This is a situation where again this is also uh, some irregularity that is developed so that this is a trapped growth spiral in which uh, some such kind of a irregularity is developed during the growth of the crystal and on further uh, 
deposition of the same mineral on the surface inclusions will be trapped. This is some kind of a situation where there are some sub parallel units of the crystal that is growing and leaving behind some regular shaped cavity and which also will be resulting in the uh, uh, encapsulation of this parent fluid in the form of an inclusion. So, this is a case of a disturbed growth for example, the crystal is growing just as we are discussing that uh, on, on a structure surface when the crystals are actually uh, growing from both the uh, walls and once the uh, fracture space is filled up by the first generation of the quartz crystals if there is a, there is a fracturing then the uh, uh, the first phase of crystals that have grown they will undergo fracturing and some such kind of fractures which will develop, but again when there is fluid coming to the fracture again and depositing the same quartz on top of it. It will leave it will leave behind some kind of a situation that this inclusions will be uh, formed in, in the form of trail just at the trip, tip of this uh, fracture which was created as a as a disturbed growth during the original crystallization. And this is also very interesting that if during the growth of this particular mineral if there are some solid uh, particles which are implanted on this growing face of the crystal and then there is subsequent growth of the crystal from again by deposition from the fluid then this there will always be a tendency for this parent fluid to get trapped in, in the form of an inclusion just in the immediate vicinity of this uh, foreign object. Uh, this is uh, again which is something very interesting which was suggested by uh, Laux uh, in 2000 that the crystal surface which is growing will develop a pit initially and as the pit is developed there will be less of uh, nutrient coming to the in inner part of the tip of this uh, uh, pit co compared to the growing surface. So, with the growth of the uh, mineral on this particular growth phase. So, this pit will become further deeper with further decreased supply of nutrient to the to the inner part of this particular cavity and finally, it will give rise to an inclusion which will be trapped the parent fluid which will be trapped. So, this gives us some uh, idea that even though we have not been able to uh, uh, understand the intricacies of the crystal crystal growth uh, in uh, in uh, geological situations the way we depict them as constant uh, growth in the constant medium or in growth in open space from fluid, but there can be some uh, idea some concept which could be something could be conceptualized as to why the parent fluid will get uh, entrapped or encapsulated within the uh, solid lattice of the growing crystal. So, we will continue discussing uh, uh, on this uh, on further aspects of this fluid inclusions. Uh, thank you.